Hey guys, what Bambi TV? So today we're going to be reacting to one of your suggestions. Guys, we're going to be reacting to why Muslims don't marry non Muslims. Guys, in my own opinion, like, if it was me, I'm cool marrying Muslim. I don't say anything wrong with that. I feel believe in the same thing. Like, Muslim girls are actually very, very pretty. I'll say one or two. Guys, today this video actually is sponsored by New Chick, guys. Guys, New Chick is founded in 2014, guys. Like, they're focusing on creating creative, comfortable, and casual worlds, guys. Guys, their worlds are of quality and makes it affordability, guys. Like, it's, it's, like, it's made of high quality and it's very, very affordable. Like, take it for me, guys. Like, this is, this is, like, guys. I just can't explain it. I can't explain the texture for you guys. Like you need to get one for yourself. And if you use my promo code, you're gonna get 15% off, guys. Check it out. The link is in my description below, guys. Guys, let's go straight into this. The one. What is the purpose of life? Oh god. Can Muslims marry not Muslims? Yes, I feel yes. You are gentlemen, as I, I see. Everybody here that I look at is a male so far. Now, suppose you went home tonight, every one of these distinguished gentlemen. Yes. And all of your daughters chose this day to tell you that they had decided to marry the Jewish boy down the street right, right. or the Christian right. boy that was walking around. Young people, often they start all these things. And then how do you speak <laughs> to them when you say, look, the Jew is my brother. The Christian is my brother, but we don't get married. And then you come back to white doesn't want to marry black, and then everybody passes laws. So hmm. intermarriage or what they decided. What I if love your son this. came I home love and said, put in it. I have been a good Muslim for 30 years, but suddenly I have decided to become a Christian. I mean, so what do you say? Yes. Okay. Your second question about marriage. Islam tells us, you see, in detail now, whom we can and whom we can't. We follow this biblical injection to the letter where the Bible says that an idolater or an idolater thou shalt not marry. Now we who uphold that. An idolater and an idolater thou shalt not marry. So my son falls in love with a Hindu girl. My religion says, no, you can't marry her. No matter how beautiful she is, no matter how much she allures. What? He said, you can't marry. Now racially, with the Hindus, most of the Hindus, we are one language group. We have the same racial stock. We carry the same surnames. We enjoy the same dishes. But because of our religious uh, concept, idea of God, my religion says, no, you can't marry an idolater or an idolatress. I can, my religion allows me to marry a Christian woman or a Jewess. It does allow you it to marry? It does allow, yes. It does I allow know that. reason, the reason. <laughs> There's a reasoning behind it. He said, look, we are so close. If I marry a Christian, a Jewess, for example, I would be the last man to say anything abusive about any of the Jewish heroes. Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus. We have the highest respect for them. So this wife of mine, a Jewess, she will be still at home with me. In other words, I respect Moses. I respect David, Solomon, all the prophets. What do I am going to tell her, her and reason with her is, so come dear, now come a step forward. You have been at a certain level of religious education. Come two steps forward. One is to accept Jesus and then accept Muhammad as well. So I am asking her to come to a higher level of understanding religion. To the Christian woman in this country, when I said that at first, that look, we are allowed to marry Christian women. So the white men in the audience, when I delivered talks, they were thinking, say, ah, yeah, yeah, I know why. So I said, why? He said, just because we are whites. You think now marrying a white woman is a superior thing to do? I said, no, no, no. Even if the Christian woman is an African woman, she is a Hottentot, she is a Bushman, she is Christian, I can marry her. Because again, we are so close. We accept Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We accept him as the Messiah. We accept his miraculous birth. We accept his many miracles. The only point of real difference between me and my spouse, that Christian lady would be, that I would say, look, he is not God. He is not the begotten son of God. But everything else, we have a common denominator. We have one with the Jew. We have a common denominator with the Christian. So we said, we can get them and more easily they can be absorbed in the house of Islam. Because 
whatever you believe, we believe, plus a step further. But now my daughter can't marry a Hindu man, nor can she marry a Jew, nor can she marry a Christian. Now the Hindu is understood being an idol worshiper. But now he said, what about the Jew and the Christian? I can marry a Jewess and I can marry a Christian woman. Why can't my daughter marry a Jew or mm -hmm. a Christian? Yeah. Now the reason is that you see the Christian husband of my daughter, he's got no respect for Muhammad. He's going to use an offensive language. He's going to say Muhammad is an imposter. Why? Because that's Not his training. No, that's his training. Because as soon as you say, as soon as you say that you accept Muhammad as a prophet, you are a Muslim. You see, when you say, you have, I say, look, Muhammad, you, you will say, look, Muhammad was a great man. Everybody says so. He was a mighty man. <laughs> you know, he created a nation, and an empire, and a religion. He is supposed to have left behind a book, like the Quran. So he said, look, I take off my hat to the man. He's the great. And so many people say he was one of the greatest men that ever lived. Michael H. Hart in his top 100. He puts Muhammad number one. Yes. Jews Masarman, you know, in his uh, book on, on the Turks. Uh, the history of top the Turks. 100 men. Right. In the top 100. Um, then Jews Masarman, yeah, in, in the, the, the history, who are his, his, his great leaders. And La Martin in his history of the Turks. He says, if greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and outstanding results are the three criteria of human greatness. Who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? He's daring people, bring your candidates. So in other words now, from that point of view, the Christian, the Westerner, will be prepared to concede that Muhammad was a great man. But he was an imposter. In other words, he was, not, he was a false prophet. So that's the biggest barrier now. Because if you accept that he was also a prophet, prophet means that God chose him. If God chose Muhammad, now Muhammad tells you that the flesh of the swine thou shalt not eat. Now you can say, look, I like pork chops. You know, all my life I've been enjoying it. He said, look, this man is a prophet of God and is authorized by God to tell you now, don't eat the pig. Don't drink alcohol. No promiscuousness. Don't dance or court or date women. So if every step now, if you believe in this man, that he is a prophet mm. of God, you have to listen to him. Guys, please, I'm sorry for pursuing here. I know it's almost over, but like, he said something, don't date or court a woman. Like, please elaborate on it. I shouldn't say that you guys don't date, you guys just get married. <laughs> please elaborate on it, guys. Like, I need to know your suggestion. I need to know what this is really about, guys. Like, please, just... Leave it in comment section. I'll read it. I promise. I'll read it. Thank you. It's not just a word saying, I believe he's a prophet. It means nothing. When you say he is a prophet of God, what does it imply? It means that he is chosen by God. Now, if he's chosen by God to guide you, to tell you now according to your capacity now, that you are not to touch alcohol, you are not to take interest, you are not, whatever he tells you, it becomes binding on you which you are not prepared to accept, who, the Jew or the Christian. Mr. Nida, I have to, I, last time I was... Hmm. You know, I feel Amadida has a problem with some Christians who actually take alcohol, but I don't. <laughs> Let me say, majority of Christians don't. Some do, some don't. Like, I feel some Christians that do have Christians that were not actually brought up in, like, maybe they converted or, I don't know, they choose to go way well, but if you see a Christian that take alcohol, guy, like, he isn't a devoted Christian, like, he does not, some may be devoted, like, they may take some sip of alcohol, but, but I feel most, let me say, most devoted Christian, let me say, 80% they don't and we don't actually commit adultery we don't it's a sin to us and to you guys too like we know that and he said something about alcohol and adultery and pig we don't take pork guys we don't eat pork even any christian tell you that eat pork i don't believe them guys like i've been curious i've been a christian since birth so i can boldly say like pork is prohibited 
there's something I don't know clean food. I don't know why people eat it, but I know that Paul said, "Any food blessed by God or something, something is." But I still don't think I feel it's unclean. Like pork is not clean food. But I, one thing I like Christian about it that we don't really have any. I can say we don't really have any control. I won't say contradiction, but we don't really have any rules like trying to stop us from living our life. There are some rules, but we always find a way to go past it. Like taking a fuck, you say you can actually pray, bless it, and eat. But I feel I still feel it isn't right. But you can actually do it. It's in the Bible and alcohol. Jesus turned water into wine. But it says drink but don't be drunk. So you can actually do it. It's in the Bible. But what if I decide to marry a Muslim woman? I don't say anything wrong with that, bro. But I, I don't feel I'll be someone that wants to convert you. If you believe in Muhammad and I believe Jesus is the Son of God, we just have to go to a point that one of us will have to convert. Either I convert or you convert. It's treasure. It's not supposed to work. <laughs> now I get this point. Like, imagine it. You're trying to convert your wife. Your wife trying to convert you. But I feel one of us is right. We both can't be right. That's why I'm actually going through this journey though. Because I need to find some loopholes in the two. And see places people don't people can't answer my questions to, then I know who is right and who is wrong. Guys, I'm still going to try. I'm not going to say my Muslim lady. I don't know yet. But if I want to, I don't feel like I want to stop me. I'm a good child, bro. I'm a good boy. Like, why would he not? Please, my religion, like, I understand Islamic. I think I've gotten some level of understanding of the religion. So, I feel I can work it out. Maybe, maybe not. Guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out YouTube, guys, that made this video possible. Check them out. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.